You're welcome back. This is News File. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And if you have been reading the newspapers, the dailies, you will see that the Electoral Commission is uh, giving a public notice asking for audited accounts of the registered political parties. And I just read one of the, the, the such publications this week. He says that the Electoral Commission wishes to inform the general public that the underlisted political parties have submitted or have failed to submit to the commission their audited accounts as required by Section 21B um, of the Political Parties Act 2000, Act 574. Any person may, on payment of a, a fee of 250 uh, Ghana cities, uh, inspect or obtain copies of the audited accounts of a political party aforementioned between the hours of 9 o'clock in the morning and 3 or 5 o'clock in the evening from Thursday the 21st of March at the library as in the resource room of the Electoral Commission. Payment shall be made to the Commission's account at any uh, GCB uh, branch, banker use of bankers draft. A public notice uh, this public notice is issued per one to section 21 1b of sex of 21 2 of the political parties uh, act and is signed by the electoral commission chairperson jane uh, mensa uh, so let me start with coffee uh, bento you were in court uh sometime in 2017 correct and yeah. then you got the court i remember meeting you guys in court a few mm -hmm. times making the argument in the Human Rights Court uh, too. Yeah. Right. Now, the court granted you your wishes yeah. that this is part of the law that had been broken for a long time by the political mm. parties and yeah. that it should be respected. Yeah. The EC, as we speak, mm -hmm. is saying some have complied, others have not complied. Mm -hmm. The law's requirement is that six months from, is it December, uh, after the <laughs> elections, they are supposed to make these things to it. If they don't, uh -huh. they are actually committing offenses. Uh -huh. So what's been going on since you got that judgment? Right. We got the judgment in 2017. Right. And it's one of those quiet fights mm. that you know, we, we undertake because we believe it's important in the fight against corruption. So let me give a bit of And when I say they got a judgment, I'm referring to the Citizen, Citizen Ghana, Ghana movement. movement. CGM, yes. Yeah. Lola Ekosego and, and yeah. Citizen Ghana movement. So this is Lola Ekosego who was a plaintiff in the Citizen Ghana movement. And it is necessary at this point that at least um, those of us who are the lawyers in these cases, we tend to get all the credit, but there are many people there. And this is not one of those funded NGOs. Citizen Ghana is not funded or anything. It's just a couple of citizens who feel this is the right thing to do. So before I go there, I think we all must remember the work that some of these people do. Dr. Isi Ansa, uh, Madam Kathiadi, Sarah Safuije, um, Joe Bonfo, or Tu Bonfo, Lolan Segomosis, Nanama Adumbuachi, Professor Dodu, um, lawyer Kwesi, Wadana Kwesi, Anil Sabute, who we are going to marry off today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, myself, Araba Botri of Ashesi University, Rodney Longdon, George Anti. So here are people who said that, look, we want to fight corruption. Corruption is a major problem in Ghana. And we said, where do we start? Because it's hydra headed. Well, it is rumored that a political party campaign costs between 30 to 50 million dollars. And somebody funds it. It is also rumored that it is the source of a lot of the corruption because when people fund the parties and you come into power, you owe them and you have to pay them. You pay them by giving them contracts. And sometimes you give them these contracts and for whatever reason they are not performed or they are shortly done or there are many stories and the Auditor General reports will show you so many of them. And nothing happens to them because, well, they may have paid already. So there are all these anecdotes and you know suggestions and suspicions around. And we said, well, there is a law that says that political parties must submit their accounts. And they must account to the rest of us for you know the monies they use, where it came from, etc. If we got to know more about this, we will be able to maybe track and start figuring out how to stamp out some of these, you know, perceptions about corruption. If they are there, we deal with them. If they are not there, we clarify. So we went to court and said, well, the EC is not doing its job. It was during, madam, uh, the previous uh, Charlotte. uh, Charlotte's time. So we wrote to them and said, please give us the information. You know, earlier on, we had gone to court to wrestle on the right to information, which we had won. 
And so based on that, we said, we have a right to that information. Please give it to us. He says, no, we won't give it to you. So we went to court and said, the court should compel them to do it because it's a statutory duty. The law says they must do it. And if it is not national secret or any kind of sensitive information, they must give it to us. We made the point that this is necessary for us to perform our duties as citizens under Article 41 as a terror. And, well, they argued back and forth, but we won in the end. And they were given six months to do this job. They didn't do it. And that's part of the problem that civil society has. You've won the case, now you have to enforce it. Well, there were all those things going on at the EC. So, well, um, we had to kind of lay back. Madame Jean Mensah comes in, and we engage with her. There were the hawks in our system, or the hard heads, who said we should go back and do the contempt and other things. But she engaged with us quite well. We were happy with the way she engaged and explained herself. We are not happy with the speed with which she did things. We think she should delegate more. I'm saying these things because now every citizen has the right to go for those accounts. Mm. And if she, if she doesn't build a system they say that... you have to pay 250 to, I think it's a reasonable yeah, sum yeah. to pay, yeah. Mm. So she needs to build a system to respond quickly to these things. Now, once these things are done, we start the process of transparency in political party financing. And then we can do some of these trackings and things that we need to do. Something else is coming up. It's too early to say it, but you know, um, time will tell. And this is what will bring the uh, quality. It does not seem, based on what we have seen, that the political parties are filing necessarily accurate mm. accounts. <laughs> if you seek to run the whole country but cannot be truthful, in your own accounting as submitted to government, the statutory authority, and I'm not accusing anybody of it. I said, if that is the problem, then we do have a problem. So basically, yes, this is a job that Citizen Ghana did. We did it on behalf of everybody, and we think we've wrestled it for the country. It's a start. It's not an end. We have gotten the accounts now. The EC has published it, okay, under quite a bit of pressure. And now we have to move on, and the wider citizenry should do this, of scrutinizing these accounts and starting the process where we'll get to the point like they have in the U.S. where you know every single donor and how mm. much they donate. So the law is that the EC must receive these um, audited accounts mm -hmm. and then report. And then within 30 days of receipt, mm -hmm. it should make the publication. Now, what you are suggesting to us now is that journalists and other individuals who are interested in mm -hmm. knowing how these parties have gotten monies and expended them mm -hmm. can go to the EC, as they have said, from the 21st, that was uh, Thursday mm -hmm. or when, Wednesday, to be able to access this information. So you are setting mm -hmm. that it would include a declaration of their assets, mm -hmm. it would include their expenditure, mm -hmm. contributions and donations, mm -hmm. that all of these will be there, the law's expectation is that this will have the state of the accounts, mm -hmm. sources of the funds, mm -hmm. members and the dues they have paid, the contributions and donations as I refer to cash and kind, mm -hmm. the assets, including the fiscal asset they have, mm -hmm. and the audited account for the year. Yes. This and is what the law requires them mm. to do. Before we did our court case. Mm. The law requires that as a political party, you keep these records. The law is that they were supposed to do this within six months from the 31st of December of each year. That is submitted to the EC. Right. File it with the EC. Mm. Fact is that most of them didn't do it. One of the arguments we made in court was that Madame Charlotte, for instance, was disqualifying certain uh, political parties for very little things. And our point was that if you can do that, disqualify a whole political party for what we consider to be minor infringement, mm. how do you countenance political parties infringing basic bookkeeping where the law requires them to submit it and deposit with you, and then you just let them go? So we're insisting that if you don't do it, then you should not be able to run as a political party in this country. It starts the record keeping and the accountability. And it's sad that most of them were not doing it. Okay. Just hold on briefly. Now, uh, uh, Bochi, the question is, the law is very clear in the punishment section that if you fail to do this by section 30, subsection 3, if you fail to do this, you should be taken to court. When you are taken to court and you are found guilty, you can be punished with a fine of 10 million penalty units, 10 million penalty units, which translates into 120 
20 million Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. Or you could get, yes, two years two increase years in both. that. Check the law. One of the laws that most of us, <laughs> we, don't, we don't look at. 10 million penalty units. So 120 million Ghana cities or two years imprisonment. And there are other consequences that you could get a cancellation of your registration. Now, if your registration is canceled, the implication is that you cannot call, advertise, or attend a meeting in the capacity of a member or officer of a party. You cannot canvass for support or make contribution or accept any contribution from anybody. Simply uh, speaking, you are a dead political party. Mm -hmm. There's no history that we have attempted to do this. The, the law is there. What needs to be understood is that political parties are public bodies. Mm. But that hasn't been understood. Political parties have been seen as private bodies. In other words, this is our body. We are the members, etc. We run for elections. When we, when we win the election, we become the government. But until then, they are seen as private. It, it's us. Political parties are quasi-constitutional bodies. The constitution establishes them mm -hmm. by giving you the right to form them. But once you form them, they are, not, they are no more private entities. They are, they are public bodies. Now, therefore, monies given to or gotten by political parties are public funds. Mm. Again, that understanding hasn't sunk in yet. So any donation given to any political party is a donation that belongs to the state. And that's why it has to be regulated. Now, the constitution understands this because our constitution is based on party politicking. <coughs> Therefore, the imperatives of our governance dictates that there must be political parties whose establishment and running, however, is expensive. And that needs to be funded. Now, let's face it. The truth is that as a country, we have played the ostrich. We have created the impression that we don't care how you make your money. Somehow, we think you will make your money. Somehow, we think you will run the And election. that encourages corruption. Corrupt. Correct. So what has happened is that we do not care of the source. The party is somehow able to raise money. And when they contest elections, then we have a scenario of what I have classified as political investors. Mm -hmm. So we have people who are smart business people in Ghana. Some, of you, some people would invest in uh, companies, will invest in all kinds of commercial ventures. There are people who invest in politics. These people have an understanding, like all investors, that when you invest, there must be returns. So we have political investors who then wait for post-electoral compensation. So these political investors invest in the politics. They expect that somehow they'll be winning. When they win, then they are compensated. And that's why there's a lot of, is it round pecks in square holes or mm. the other way around, as I say. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of situations where people who may not qualify for certain positions mm. are put in those positions because those were investors. They invested in a project. The project has oh, yielded dividends. They are given yeah, the compensation. So your view is that so this kind of sunshine is one sunshine. of the best ways to, you know, avoid the corruption in the parties. The constitution and the laws of Ghana have understood that exactly. You put it the right way. The constitution has understood, uh, and, I mean, understands the mechanics of these things. So the constitution has put in place a framework to ensure that these investments that are made, or rather the monies that are gotten by these parties, are superintended by the law. Uh, sorry, or by the regulator. And the regulator here is the Electoral Commission. Unfortunately, as you said, this has been observed in breach hmm. and not an actual observance. So moving forward, we need to ensure that um, this is cleaned and sanitized. It is only by doing this that we can actually speak of state sponsorship of political parties, which okay. unfortunately we don't Thank have Thank you. Just hold on for me. Yeah. Now, uh, Randy, quickly about your, your view on you this. You know, Samson, back to the issue of how people see the law. Okay. That in those jurisdictions we are proud of, they see it as enforcement. Without enforcement, there's no law. Right. We see it as enactment. And that's how come you're talking about a law which is about 30 years old. And he has to take citizen Ghana. 20-something mm. years old. No, okay. This Political Parties Act was passed in 2000. 2000. Yeah, so we're talking about some 19 years. Okay. <clears throat> 19 years. Right. And now he has to take citizen <clears throat> Ghana, I mean, to go to court to just get an issue of compliance you know, dealt with. Mm. And I have my problem with the opaqueness of some of these laws, like this one, like the one on uh, uh, declaration of assets. Right. You know, because I, I, I think that they do not make sense. They don't take away the opaqueness that fights corruption. Because look, this one, 
even in the opaque state, people are not complying. But at the end of the day, if a party even provides the accounts, what is the mechanism to even determine that, look, this is actually what is spent? How are you able to determine that? At least we, the citizens, will get to know. Yeah. And we can, we can watch you no. and say, <laughs> you, you submitted your account, and you say, this is what it is. This is your source of funding, mm -hmm. and this is how much you got from your, your party members. Mm -hmm. This is how much you got as contribution and donation. So if you are making certain expenditures, mm -hmm. We should be able to ask and questions. And there are punishments it's for wrong right. mm. declarations. There's a major yeah. prohibition, for example, mm. against foreign donations. Yes. Right. Yes. So, yeah. Randy, yeah. so, Randy, you Randy know, finish up. You know, so, so, so <laughs> I think that Citizen Ghana has done a good job. At least it gets the public to see what the parties put in the accounts. Mm -hmm. The public gets to see the level of their honesty and all that. You know, same as the declaration. Look, there are even... I say they are not substantiated, but I'll tell you this. Mm -hmm. That there are people who don't own, there are claims of people who don't own property. But in anticipation of what they will own in office, they indicate ownership of some properties. That's you understand right. me? So that if tomorrow they are able to own those properties, mm. there is some uh, evidence to, to the point that's, that look that's they, what they, da daniel domelovo says we should cure yeah. yes sir uh, quick, quick, briefly on well, the, the, this is the way this is the way to fight the corruption in in as led by the party well it's important it may not be the full prescription for a solution but it's very important and i think we need to congratulate kofi and his friends for taking it up because it's been long standing mm. You know, uh, I've been going through. They so were much, doing right? this alongside the bus branding matter. Bus branding, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, but the EC itself, the 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 law, the act, mm -hmm. also gives the EC uh, the right. Yes. To request, and if not, to appoint an auditor. Am I right? To yes. audit yes. the party. This fought us in court and said no. They didn't want to do this. My goodness, but yes. that's part of the problem. It was very sad. Because we think the institutions should mm. work towards yes. obeying mm. the law. They should also be proactive. They mm. should deal with the law. If you go in there, it's there. Mm. Mm. No, I think section... Uh, every, all of all that those things. Can, yes, and it may be true, so but we have to ensure that the regulatory body mm. also mm. executes, mm. operationalizes right. what the law well, mandates it to do. Elections okay. for no? there was, when they wrote uh, 20, 2018, mm. I, I saw a letter, right. December 20, I won't mm. mention the party. Hmm. But the party's explanation for non-submission non of uh, 2017 audited accounts was that the auditor was sick. <laughs> and so they were looking for a new auditor. Auditors I have the sick. letter here. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. the auditor is operating in the sick system. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I've got just uh, two, three minutes to go. I wanted to do something that I may not be permitted. <laughs> okay, so we, this, this is actually a bit of an ambushment, but I think you should, once you are here in the studio, we should hear you say something about this. You, you, were, you were illogical in describing someone you wanted to invite to the commission, as in the short Commission, as a material witness. And yet when the person came, you gave him less than how many minutes? One minute, and you, you drove him away. <laughs> If I were him, I would comment. No, he should. He, he should. It's a public interest matter. He should. <laughs> should I or should I not? He should. He should. <laughs> Shouldn't dignify it. If there is something of you think. Right. Some of us, some of us think you should Look, be answering. Okay, so yes. I have to be honest with you. This is something I have decided not to comment on. Thank you. But since... You've been forced. Huh? Yes. Since it seems this has been squeezed out, let me just mention it. Let me start by first of all saying that the commission has no interest in any witness. The commission has absolutely no interest. However, the commission created two categories of, of witnesses. One category are witnesses who reached out to the commission that they're interested in coming to testify. The other category are witnesses the commission itself listed. I assume you're speaking about Mr. Paul Admochi. Exactly. Mr. Paul Admochi fell within the category of witnesses who reached out to the commission. Really? Yes. In other words, Mr. Paul Admochi reached out to the commission through somebody, which I don't have to disclose. And this is public record. And the good thing is that there are text messages to this effect. Therefore, when you reach out to the commission as an inquisitorial body, the commission is interested in every evidence that will help it in its fact-finding mission within the time constraints. So he was allowed to come. And I'm dealing with the illogicality of the logic you're talking about. 
once you reach out and the commission gives you the platform, that means you are telling the commission presumptively that you have a story. The commission is interested in your story. However, the commission has three main, um, you know, if you like, indicia for checking. You must either be, for relevancy purposes, you must either be um, somebody who actually participated in the events, or you did not participate, but you are either in a command or control if it's a, it's a force, or you are in a supervisory responsibility if it's work. The media, a lot of you are in the supervisory responsibility. And then there's a third category of being an expert. These were there already. If you decide to appear, the commission will still review your testimony along one of these lines. Now, that will be done when you are before the commission. So as you're speaking, the commission can make an assessment as they go along. You see, the, the, I've been very constrained in mm. saying some of these things, and I'm saying them now because I'm being asked to say them. Because unfortunately, in my opinion, too many unnecessary things going on. The commission has already completed its work. And I'm not interested in saying these things. But Mr. Paul Adamotri fell within the category of those who reached out. Therefore, when you appear before the commission, there is no illogicality of the commission saying, come, and we need to speak to you. And then you came, and in another breath, we say, we don't need you. As the lawyers who say, you are probate and reprobate. We didn't do that. Okay. You reached out. Yeah. The commission said, we're interested in hearing you, because apparently you said you have a story. Come, we we'll hear you. And when you started speaking, the commission itself made the decision that having heard you. And you see, the word irrelevant was, I think he was irked by that word. The word irrelevant wasn't used in my interview with, the, with, the, with Joy. The, what I said was, these are the relevancy criteria. And so having assessed the relevancy criteria and having the commission spoken to you to a point, the commission came to the conclusion that in the scheme of things, there's no further need moving forward. But let me, let me say this as well, because I'm sure there'll be further response. And I guarantee you, and I guarantee the whole country, this is the last I'll ever say about this. Because, it's un because as far as I'm concerned, frankly, it's unnecessary. I mean, testimony before the commission is supposed to be an aid. You are aiding the commission in its work. And therefore, if you're aiding the commission, the commission is happy with that. You, you don't have to be more interested in aiding that the commission wants your aid itself. So we are happy with what he did. And the commission thanked him to the point to which he was able to help. In fact, I can guarantee you that when he first came, and since all this is in the public domain now, if there will be another commission of inquiry on this. We probably can put all that before. Because I can guarantee you that when he even came, before he even appeared before the commission, and he can testify to this, the chairman of the commission, having assessed the circumstances of his coming, among others, the chairman of the commission actually engaged him before he appeared formally, that in the scheme of things, the chairman was actually going to, was advising him that we would probably either review further and get back to him or he shouldn't testify. I mean, there was something to that effect. And I can tell you, I was off the scene at that moment. I was not even at the commission. I was somewhere having another meeting in respect to the commission's work. I was reached out to by the same third party inter intermediary in respect of this, urging that at least he be given audience because he was still trying to appear. This is revealing. That he should be given audience. In other words, he's already there. So he must still be given audience. And I can tell you that I have to speak and engage that once he was already there, he should be given audience. I can tell you that the limited audience he had, it was because I felt that God in touch and said, because he was already there, there must be an, you know, at least he must be taken through to get a sense of what the story is. Because you see, the commission had a limited mandate. We have a one month, and as I indicated in my interview, we have a one month etched in statute. So it is not even open to His Excellency the President to even give us an extension. It has to be mm. amended. We have to go through a process. Okay. All these okay. things informed mm. speed, efficiency, scope, and depth. All these have to be factored into that. Mm. And so, look, once again, the Commission has zero interest. And I have zero interest in anybody who appears. But in the scheme of things, everybody will have to be processed along rational principles. And he failed and when he was processed in the face I, of the I commission. I am not That's even interested in the word failed, yeah, etc. Okay. okay. But I have right. zero he interest. Out. But he reached out. He, okay, now, now he's saying it's that amazing. he reached out first. Otherwise, it's, the, it's still problematic. Even if he reached out first, you still wrote to him yeah. and called him a material witness. Yeah, I've seen then that. he I've appears. Seen that in one minute, you dismiss him. Anyway, that's what he says. It's no. illogical. Yeah, he reached out no for this. Right. Uh, Just anyway, you have, uh, you have reached out and indicated presumptively that you have a story. Yeah. 
Look, any witness who appears before a court or judicial body must be a material witness. It is a descriptive term of art. Because if you're not a material witness, who are you? You so are, you are, you are so it's an assumption. Because so you hear what the person but that's, has. that's the point. Let's face it. All commissions of inquiry ordinarily are interested in everybody who has something to say. That's why they open it and say the public. Anybody who has something to say, you are contributing to the process. So the commission is interested in anybody who has something to say. In that respect, anybody who appears before the commission is a material witness. You are a material witness because by reaching out to the commission that you want to appear because you want to share something, the commission understands that you have something of, I'm of sure you had two months. Okay. Okay. We have no, I'm, I'm yeah, sure, and I have, have no problem at all. And let's face it, it is the commissioners mm. who haven't listened to him. Again, if Determined anybody, that it wasn't necessary. anybody okay. go and listen Thank to the you. thing. The, no, the commissioners didn't even say mm. he was not relevant. They said they've heard him, but because they wanted him to speak, you see, they wanted everyone to speak to specific evidence. Mm. So they asked, have you come with A, B, C, D? And I think his response, he said, I no, there, I but don't I also have, but I can supply. Correct. Mm. And the commissioner said, well, thank you, etc. We'll get back mm. to you if necessary. Okay. That's it. All right. Okay. So I have zero interest. Just okay. to, just for, and I'm not going to make any further public comment on this. Because right. frankly speaking, as far mm. as I'm concerned, it was a public exercise. It's been okay. done. It's closed. I'm thank done. you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, hoping that uh, Dr. Baumia will be done with his uh, lecture on the economy so that the next time we come, we we'll talk about uh, the CD and its behavior and the magic it is beginning to yeah, perform. The, the CD plus the euro bond, the euro bond that was oversubscribed uh, was seven with, times. Did you see how it was <laughs> You didn't see how yes, it was yes. on social media. My guests have been Abdul Malik <laughs> Kukuba, co editor in chief of the New Crusading hey. Guide newspaper. <laughs> Kofi Abochi is the uh, past dean, the Gimpa Law School and partner, <laughs> Access Legal. Like Randy Abe is host. <laughs> Good morning, Ghana. Metro Television, Metropolitan Television, <laughs> and Kofi Bentel is Senior Vice President, Imani Africa. I'm Samson Ladi Ayenini. My Samson. outfit, as always, is by Latina. <laughs>